Hey, welcome into Shockerland, the off-season edition. Woo-wee. It is no longer college basketball season. The oh. tournament is over. And so, but hey, there's still things to talk about. I'm Billy. Kyle is here too. And Kyle, this roster for Wichita State, normally you're always going to have some turnover, but we've got some guys leaving early. We've got some guys who are just leaving. What is this roster going to look like when the team gets back together and starts playing games next fall? We know one thing. It is not going to look like this past season, right? We've lost a lot of people. Who have we lost? We've lost almost too many players to name, <laughs> yeah. but since we have yeah. time to, to fill, I'm going to name them all. Go ahead. So why not? Let's let's run down this list because yeah. it's pretty lengthy. Yeah. These are players that will not be back next season. Richard Kelly, senior, Zach gone. Brown, senior, gone. Rhino Nerger, senior, gone. Daryl Willits, senior, gone. Shaq Morris, oh, senior, gone. Connor Frankamp, senior, gone. Landry Shamit, not a senior, mm. gone. NBA, NBA. gone to the NBA draft. Yep. C.J. Kaiser, not a senior, not an NBA draft guy. He is just gone. What happened there? Well, he's transferring. Yeah. Um, every after every season, Coach Marshall sits down with players that should be returning and has a kind of a heart to heart, open discussion with them. Of hey, here's where I think you're at right now with your abilities. Here where I see your future is. And so apparently, they decided amongst themselves that C.J. is better um, leaving this program and transferring to another university. We don't, right now, we don't know yeah, where. We're not sure. um, so yeah. we wish him all the best and hope he has a successful career. But he will not be back. Okay. And then a couple other surprise uh, announcements this, this past week was uh, Kaylin Malone and mm-hmm. Brett Barney, mm-hmm. two walk-ons, are, are transferring as well. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that's that's quite a list of players that we've been fam- familiar with the past few years and won't be back this next season. So here's what I'm thinking. Normally, you know, CJ leaving – you know, that was a guy, we saw him play. He, he played yes. a few times, especially in the non-conference early in the season. And then the, the two walk-on guys, Brett Barney, you know, they got some some uh, garbage time at the end sometimes. Normally those won't, wouldn't be that big of a deal, but you're all, we're already losing so much of the roster to seniors, especially that CJ one. That kind of hurts, doesn't it? Doesn't it, it, it just, it, it leaves the roster so empty, it seems. It does, and it, it, it surprised me a little bit with uh, C.J. leaving just mm-hmm. because the Chakras need some guards next year. With yeah. uh, you know Fran Camp and the seniors leaving, with Shamit leaving, with their prize recruit Alex Lomax deciding to leave and go to yeah, Memphis. Yeah, we didn't mention that. Yeah, um, And so yeah. There, there are three open scholarships available, assuming you know Billy and I don't get the call. <laughs> but uh, sure. in those three open scholarships, the Chakras are going to need at least two of those to be guards, and maybe even all three. Because those are those are positions left from Shamit, Lomax, and Kaiser leaving, which those are the three guards. That's the um, big question in the offseason, I think. Before we really dive into to who's going to be that point guard and look at the guard situation, let's talk about who's coming back. Who yes. do we have to rely on? Who do we know is coming back? <laughs> this is a much shorter list. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> but there there are uh, really four players that are returning that had significant minutes this past year, or even four. any minutes. Four. Uh, you have Samaja Haynes Jones, okay, which I, I I still have a lot of hope for him. Yeah, I've seen I think flashes so. of brilliance, um, and so if he can kind of work out some of those problems he's had and improve his game, I think he'll be a big contributor this season. Mm-hmm. Um, Rod Brown is a guy that most of you probably aren't familiar with, but he mm-hmm. was he he set out last season as red a shirt. red shirt. Yeah, um, but he's a six six forward from Memphis, and by all accounts, he's going to be pretty good. And so I'm looking forward to see him. Uh, he'll probably be slated as a starter um, as of right now. Wow. So we'll, we'll see wow. how that goes. Okay. Um, Austin Reeves, a familiar name. Yeah. Yep. He'll be one of the major pieces next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marcus McDuffie. Uh, there was a report that Greg Marshall had told, I believe, John Rothstein that uh, McDuffie was coming back. Okay. But then this hasn't really been confirmed. So completely. we're putting him on the returning list. I'm assuming he's coming back. Asterisk. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I, I can't imagine where else he would go. So I'm, I'm not the NBA, not no, yet, not yet. Not yet. Um, yeah. So I, I'm guessing he'll be back. Okay. And let's certainly hope so. <laughs> okay. Because uh, the only other player with meaningful minutes was Asbjorn Meatguard, and he didn't play a lot. Yeah. Um, he's tall. He has a lot of raw, raw talent, I believe. There's possibility um, potential. Just yeah. he has to keep improving and yeah. be more familiar with the system. Okay. And of course we have two two walk-ons that I believe are coming back. We haven't heard one way or the other. Okay. Um, but so that's. Okay. That's pretty much it. Um, so, what you're saying there is, <laughs> we're gonna have, we're gonna have a starter, maybe multiple starters who have not seen significant minutes oh, yeah. for Wichita State before. Um, and so the the biggest holes, okay. So the big ones coming back, we're assuming Mar- Marcus McDuffie 
and Austin Reeves, um, two of the big ones. The next level down, I would say, but still very significant and a good contributor, Samaje Haynes-Jones. Mm -hmm. And then the rest are going to be a bunch of newcomers, a bunch of guys with potential. Um, for me, what that means is uh, you need point guards and you need uh, rebounders, to be yes. honest with you. Um, Losing a lot of minutes in the paint. The point guard, especially with this Wichita State program, the point guard has been so important. You had Fred Van Vliet, who was you know, the leader of an amazing run for Wichita State. Um, you know, th then you had Landry Shamit, who probably did not play to the full of his potential while he was at Wichita State, but still ran the show. You need a guy, I think, in a Greg Marshall system who can run the show. Do we have that? Who is that guy? As of right now, we do not have that okay. player on the okay. roster. Um, I, I know Coach Marshall is recruiting, obviously, and mm -hmm. he's trying to find that next point guard, especially with Lomax leaving. And so, and I mean, if you look at the current roster of returning players and incoming freshmen right now, the only really guard that I trust is Samaja Haynes-Jones. And by okay. some accounts, he's more of a two guard than a pure point guard. Yeah. And yeah. so I don't really see a pure point guard right now on this team, but it's still early to some degree. Um, and so I would say that I, I see Samaje as the top guy, especially the top returning guy yes, for the point for sure. guard. Austin Reeves is, is a good guard. He's not he's a point, not point guard, point, no. and I don't want him to be because I want him shooting. He's he's a scoring guard, a shooting guard. I think Samaje is a scoring guard too. Yes. Um, and so he Samaje will have to change his game, I think, if he wants to be that floor general type of point guard. Because right now it's him. Right yeah. now, by yeah. default, he is the floor general. He is the the main guard who's going to run the show. And okay. we saw some great games last year where he looked brilliant. He dropped 30-plus points a couple games. Mm -hmm. um, but other times he just looked flustered. And, you know, it, it was his first year, so there's always growing pains. But uh, I, I expect more out of him this next season. Here's the question. Here's the question for the offseason, I think, for Greg Marshall, the, the one that we're all going to be waiting for. And I, and I wonder, how is Greg Marshall going to handle this? How is the staff going to handle this? Do you – Name a starting point guard now. Do you go to do, go to a guy, Samaje, Austin, uh, maybe even one of the freshmen coming? Do you go to them and say, "Listen, you you are our starting point guard. You are our guy. Here is the title. Now let me throughout the summer develop you. Let me get you, show you that role, and do that." You see a lot in the NFL and college football. You see that with a quarterback. Point guard is the quarterback of you know the the system for basketball. The quarterback, a lot of times you see a coach name the guy and then let them develop throughout the season. Or the other way you do that, and we've seen this too in the NFL and college football, you have a quarterback competition. Do, then do you have a point guard competition? You say, Austin, Samaje, um, random freshman, walk on, <laughs> whoever. Um, those minutes are there. Who's going to earn them? Sit back and prove it to me. You know, right. show me, show me who it is. Which one do you take? What do you do? Uh, what I would do, or yeah. what Coach Marshall would oh, do? I don't care those what you would do. Answers. I do not care. What, I would care. What is Greg Marshall going to do? Greg Marshall makes no guarantees okay. with his team okay. and his roster. Yeah, he plays the best players. He plays the players who perform the best in practice, who do the right things. And so I don't see him saying, "Hey, Samaje, you're our point guard in this next season. Go get it." Okay. He'll say, "Hey, Samaje." Here's a window of opportunity for you. Here's a chance to be that guy, to be the next Van Vliet, to be the next Shamit. And he'll, t he'll tell him, hey, these are some things you do great at. These are some things you have to improve on. But I don't think Marshall's going to say, you know, the job is yours no matter what. Um, that's just – that's not him. And I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think that's the right decision I get that. either. But, but think of the confidence boost it could oh, yeah. bring to a guy if you say, you know what, I'm that guy. Now I've got to step up and live up to that title that has been given to me, that has been bestowed on me. Um, no, that makes sense. I, I see that. And, and I, I, you probably know how Greg Marshall operates better than I do. Um, but, yeah, I, I could see naming the guy and then, and then not just basketball. Do some leadership training. Do some, do some right. things to where you help a guy who's going to lead your team. If you start now, you can groom someone for an amazing thing. Or – they can get burned out if they go in a whole summer trying to compete against each other. Um, I don't know, and yeah, you know, I, so I can make that argument the, the one way. I can definitely make the argument for let let it naturally emerge through practice and through the competitive nature. Um, 
seeing a, yeah, a point and, guard competition. And if you remember two seasons ago, uh, it started out where Fran Camp was a point guard that's and right. Shamit was a two guard. And that's how the season began. But mm -hmm. as uh, the year went on, it became evident that the team ran better when Shamit was the one and Fran Camp was the two. Yeah. And so it's just it's one of those things where this season there's so much up in the air. There's so many unknowns that uh, I think it's just we're going to have to play it out and see what happens. Do you have, uh, of the incoming of the re recruits coming mm -hmm. in, do you have a guy who could maybe maybe – step up and surprise people and be an impact player right away at the guard position? I, I do. I, I think a guy named Eric Stevenson, okay. uh, he's a guard from Washington State, and uh, I've seen him play with, you know, you know, on YouTube clips, and as okay. we okay. know, yeah. people can look good on YouTube clips. They can look really good, but, as but, you know. <laughs> by all accounts, he is, not only is he a phenomenal <laughs> athlete, but he's a great player. He, he led his team, his high school team, um, and so... He's a guy who just kind of has that hungriness about him. He has, because mm -hmm. I follow him on Twitter, and he just has that sort of play angry attitude that we've, mm -hmm. we've seen in previous seasons that we maybe didn't see as much last year. But this is a guy that I really think will step up almost immediately and be um, an alpha dog on this team. One more question. Let me ask you this, and this is probably going to be a future episode uh, later in the offseason, I think, for us. So we, we'll just briefly, I'll just throw this at you on the spot. Looking at a roster that loses eight, I think, um, looking at a roster that has a lot of new people, should we as fans, or should the program itself, should the coaching staff say, you know what, let's be realistic, it's a rebuilding year? Yeah, and uh, that's a good question. With, um, with lower expectations then, where we're not national champion contenders anymore. Maybe we're not even looking at an NCAA tournament. Maybe we just want a good quality developmental season that is hard to say it's hard to say it's hard um, to even suggest but do we need to we do we need to lower our expectations i think our expectations are already low for this uh, next yeah, season yeah maybe <laughs> um, maybe for right or wrong but if you look at marshall's history with this program like since since they made that nit championship game and they won that mm -hmm. this team has made the ncaa tournament every season um, if you look at after the season where they were a five c they lost in the first round of vcu they lost a bunch of seniors the next season, they sure. had a bunch of unknown guys, and they went to the Final Four. And so I'm not predicting the Final Four. If, if the Shockers make the NCAA tournament this year, I will be very happy. <laughs> um, but I, I, see enough, wow. I see enough talent on this team that Marshall can put it all together. And this might be a team that even plays better than this last season's. Oh, boy. That sounds extremely crazy, I know. Yeah. But Marshall has thrived with teams that have had that play-angry attitude, have that us-against-the-world mm -hmm. mantra. And so... Um, this team may not be as talented or as experienced as last season's team, but they might be hungrier and they might want to have more of a psychological advantage. We um, are going to be talking about this yes, this offseason because this will be a, a fun one to, to look at, to dissect a little bit. So be looking for future episodes as we break break down. Do we rebuild? Do we reload? reload you know, that's that's yes. kind of the, the phrasing. Uh, it's going to be different no matter, no matter what. We know that. So thanks for joining us on Shockerland. Let us know what you think. Who would you put as the starting point guard for next season already? Who is your guy? Tell us on Facebook, on Twitter, at Shockerland, and Shockerland.com. Check us out.